Kelly from Project Healing Waters Omaha, and tonight we have a very special guest, Tim Jacobs from Colorado. We're going to shift gears, guys, and lay out in the walls there, ladies. I'm going to switch heads here because we're going to go to a big hook. Um, and I'm going to, this could be a trout streamer as well, but it's, uh, I used it. I just started tying it this past, I just fished it and tied it this past summer. And it was a, it was a reasonably good pattern. We get all this stuff out of the way and switch over. Get all of my stuff here. Okay, so there it is. Let me dig around in here and get my materials out for it. By the way, if you... Uh, you do have my tying and fishing deer hair book. Um, there is a sidebar article in there where I do the day's hopper that talks about treating the quills, prepping the quills to, to tie with. Um, and the reason I mentioned that is I'm going to do a little technique on this pattern that I did a little sidebar article on in that book. And when I get to it, I'll kind of point out what it is that I'm doing with it. Okay, so this is just a big streamer pattern. It's got a set of lead eyes in it. And so the lead eyes, kind of between the lead eyes and the hair, it kind of it kind of has a, a little bit of a neutral buoyancy. You can see it's got regular eyes on it, but inside those eyes are some lead eyes. Um, I will fish this pattern in a warm water lake for bass, pike, muskie. It's not a huge fly for muskie, but it's, you know, you never know. Um, and you can tie it bigger. I would say this is medium. I could get quite a bit bigger on this one. Um, but, uh, but you know, if you fish it, um, if, if you guys have seen in tactics, I talk about, the, you know, you could, if you want, rather than buying full lines, you can go to, uh, like Rio and and uh, and scientific anglers have uh, tips. Uh, they're spay tips. Although I notice the scientific anglers now are starting to market them as not just for spay rods because they work great on like eight eight weight nine weight rods uh, that are like big bass bug tapered lines and things like that. And you just loop to loop, and you can get like an intermediate tip um, or a slow sinking tip. And this fly will kind of follow that tip and it will kind of suspend a little bit. Um, and so, and it's just a nice little durable um, pattern. And I'm gonna show you another little kind of a fun, not a technique you need for catching fish. Um, you know, it's just more a fun thing to do. So let's pull this one out and let's go ahead and tie one. So what I'm using here is, and is it's a Gamagatsu B10S, it's a one-off, it's a big hook. Um, what you want, and there's a number of hooks you can use for this. Um, uh, A-Rex has a hook. I'm trying to think of what the number is on it. Um, it's their heavyweight trout screamer hook. It's it's kind of a it's kind of a nice bass book there, but let me just kind of stick the hook out there before I put it back in there to tie this with. Um, you don't need a super long shank for this fly, okay? This hook right here, if I were doing a deer hair bass bug on it, this shank is maybe just a touch. I mean, I could do a bass bug on it, but but it's just a touch short for my taste. I'd rather go to uh, another hook that had the same kind of big gate, but was just a touch longer. But for this one, I don't want a super long um, hook. I want a little bit shorter hook, and the B10S kind of falls in that. The other thing you want is you want a pretty heavy wire hook, you know, especially if you're going to throw this for muskie or pike 
or even you know big bass, you want a reasonably heavy wire hook in it. So let me put this in here. I'm actually gonna well, let's start it here. Now let me find my eyes here. Okay. And I'm gonna, I don't know if you guys have tied lead eyes on flies before, but um now where are my where's my glue? Sorry, but I had everything organized and then I just got more crazy. Okay, here we go. Yep. All right. So I'm going to put my lead eyes here. So I'm going to start my, just going to put a little glue on that spot to help lock everything in. And then I'm just going to use it. So UTC 140 black is all it is. So I'm going to wrap through that glue to try to really lock this in right about here. I want that thread to be really locked in place. Okay. Now, I want to take my lead eyes, I want to put them on the bottom of the hook shank because I want this fly to ride upright. So I want to get that weight under the hook shank and then the weight along with the bend of the hook. This fly will this does ride pretty true in the water. So I'm going to flip. This is where a rotary vise is nice. Um, I don't happen to have one. But so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm just going to capture my lead eyes. I'm putting them right on those thread wraps. OK, now I want to come back kind of as I look here. I want to bring this back. Well, so maybe I've got if you look at my hook shank, you guys, I don't know if it exists, but if I look at my diameter of my hook, I got probably two diameters just about. Uh, back because I what when I'm going to come and I'm going to put I'm going to put deer hair on here, and I want room in front of the eyes for the deer hair. Now here's the way you want to put lead eyes on. So notice I'm figure eighting it, right? Okay, but now what I'm going to do is it's just like if you've tied parachute patterns and you posted the wing. That's exactly what I'm doing. I'm coming around the lead eyes. I'm saying I'm, I'm staying above the hook shank where the hook shank's at right now. I get about two or three wraps, and then I pull till I feel that tighten up, come back in, do a few more figure eights. Then I'll come in, do a couple of these posting wraps, and then pull. Now, you don't want to break your thread, so you kind of pull. You can feel the thread stretch a little bit, and maybe one more time. And between the glue and the figure eight wraps and the posting, you're really gonna lock those eyes. See those eyes, I'm twisting on them right now. And you can see I'm twisting on them and they're actually torquing the hook shank a little bit. So they're not going anywhere. So now I'm gonna flip this over and then I'm gonna take my thread back to my tie-in spot. Actually, I'm gonna come a little bit forward. Now, what I'm using, let me find the package for it. It's, um, here it is. It's just a uh, hairline cactus chenille. It's kind of a big polar chenille type of stuff. This is the large one. Let me find my end here. So that's kind of what this material looks like. So my my vice has got a little, there we go, a little bit of snap in there. Yeah, there it is. Okay, so I'll just come in. If you want to cut that off, you can. It doesn't really make any difference. I'm just going to come part way up the hook shank, capture that, and then bring it back to about here. And then I'm going to come forward with it. It doesn't have to be. So now what you want to do with your thread is when you look at this, um, when you look at where the eyes are, you kind of want to think about, okay, I need, I'm going to have this space here in front and I want about the same amount of space here in back. That's where I'm going to put my hair in. Okay. So now I'm going to go ahead and I'm just going to wrap this. Let me just kind of keep the bundle wrapped up so I control it. So each time I wrap, I pull it back. Real simple stuff. Just pull it back, wrap it, pull it back. I'm going to wrap, pull it back, wrap it. 
in the back, wrap it. And all I'm doing is I'm kind of building this little sparkly, um, I don't know, woolly bugger looking thing here. A couple more wrapped. I'm getting close. Not quite there yet. Okay, yeah, I think that is just about going to do it, right about there. Okay, so now I'll come through and get a couple wraps on it. Come in, trim that bunch out, pull it back, and just, just going to get a couple good solid wraps of thread right on top of that. So I just kind of created this nice fuzzy little body. Then let me find a good strip of rabbit here. That will do the trick. Yeah. So, I don't know if you can see this in the camera. Yeah, there we go. I think you're seeing it. It's a chartreuse with a yellow bar on it. It did come from full hide. And so I did I did kind of strip it out. Um, and I don't know. You can't see it here. I got a little clamp right here. I'm going to come in here and uh, let me... Okay, up here we are. Let me look at this here. Where do I want to cut it out? Right about there. Okay. Now, hold on. Let me actually use this strip here. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in the front here, trim off a little bit of the, the rabbit hair so I can get down to the leather. And I'm going to take this and put it right up there in front. And I'm just going to bind it down. And then I'm going to come back. So what you want to do with these, don't try to trim them with your scissors. Trim them with a razor blade. Come back in and get about where you think you want it. And trim it from the bottom so you don't cut the hair. And then you'll get hair kind of draping off the back like that. Okay. So there we have that part. That part's done. So I'll just kind of whip finish and finish my thread off and cut it. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is I'm using, um, for this pattern, I'm going to just, you know, I could use what I, I could use spinning hair, but I'm going to use some belly hair instead. Um, belly hair, when you use belly hair, um, this pattern, by the way, this pattern is not my pattern. I saw um, Andreas Anderson tie, watched him tie it, and I went, oh, that's a good pattern. And so I started tying it. I tie it a little, I, I do it a little bit differently than he does, not much, but I don't, it's not different enough that I am going to claim that this is somehow my fly pattern. Um, the other thing I'm going to do is, I am going to use, for this pattern, I'm using my UTC 200 denier gel spun. It's heavier. Normally for bass bugs, I use 100 or 130. But for this one, I'm going to go up to the 200. Um, and I'm going to come in here and put a little, just like I do on the bass bugs, I'm going to throw a little bit of zap right in here. And then I'm going to start my thread on that section there. And let it lock in there. Okay. So I'm going to, what I'm going to do with this pattern is I'm going to do white belly. And then I'm going to do, and you don't have to do this to catch fish, but I'm going to do a mixing technique. You know, you guys, I know last time when I did bass bugs, I showed you a stacking technique where you could have like these little rings with the spots in the middle and all that. This one's going to be a little different. I'm going to actually mix the hair together and get kind of a speckled look to it. If you've seen some of the patterns out there that different guys, I don't know if you've ever seen um, Jeff, uh, 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 Chad Robinson and um, oh, I'm forgetting Jeff. 
anybody the deer hair tire, great deer hair tire. This that's me getting to be an old guy. Um, they'll come up with the name. You'll see their pictures of their flies on Facebook. Sometimes you'll see these speckled looking patterns, and this is the way they do that. There's also a sidebar in my book on mixing hair. So let's start with the white hair. And I'm going to switch over to my razor scissors here. And let me put this aside, get my stacker out here. I'm going to need that. What's the difference? Go ahead. I'm sorry. What? It's in your two scissors. Oh, I just switched over to some razor scissors. They're just a little sharper to get in there. They're just, uh, oh, by the way, um, when we get to the end, um, I'm also a part of an at a at a for Andromedus. There they they use they do scissors and stuff. And I think we did this last time. I, I'll give the information you guys and I talked to them and they said they'd extend the they got a it's a just if you type in the code easy15, you get 15% off stuff. Um if you guys want to get scissors. Um I'm just kind of loosely connected with them. I just kind of started, you know, they got a sort of a pro team going, I guess. And so I'm, I'm part of those guys, but um, it, they make nice scissors. And the nice part about their scissors is they're not, they're, they're good quality scissors, but they're not super expensive. I mean, some of the, like I've got some German scissors and Solagens that are, that are pretty pricey. Um, and so these scissors are not quite as bad. The razor scissors are a little sharper. So when I come in here and I come in to, on my, down on my hide, it, they'll cut the hair, you know, a little better. So I'm going to come in here and get a pretty nice big bunch of hair. So you can see I got a, that's a pretty good sized clump of hair. Get that under fur out of it. And come in here and stack it. And I'm going to flip my hook over again. And you're going to need a pretty big stacker. This is a big stacker. This this is the, yeah, um, the Adromeda, at, at a, at a drama, so that's their little logo. Um, so I'm going to take this bunch. So my tips are aligned. I'm going to go ahead and trim up the butts. So I'm going to lay them in here, and I'm going to lay them back to about the bend of the hook. Switch hands. Okay, now I want this to be on the bottom, okay? And you'll notice when I did bass bugs, I would work from the top of the hook and rotate the hair to the bottom. But because I'm working around the lead eyes, you know, I really, that's pretty difficult to do, if not impossible. So I'm going to work from the bottom and I'm going to come and I'm going to keep these wraps behind the lead eyes. I'm going to come, I'm going to get three wraps, okay? Now what I'm going to do is I'm going to grab the lead eyes with my, like that, grab the lead eyes, grab the hook, the eye of the hook, and support it, support all that, and hold that bunch right there in the bottom, and I'm going to pull, and I'm going to really go right up to that tension. Right now I'm really feeling the thread tension, but I haven't cut any hairs yet, so I'm going to stop there. Let me get one wrap in there, and then we'll flip it over. And all that hair pretty much stayed on the bottom of the hook shank. So now let's get this top going. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to come in here. I'm going to take, and I'm clipping pretty, this, because of the way this head is working, I'm cutting pretty big bunches of hair. Um, so I'm going to comb this out. And I'm just going to set it here on my desk. Okay, now I'm going to come and I'm going to get my chartreuse hair. Comb it out. And I'm going to lay it in my hand. And I'm going to come back here and I'm lying, the tips are going the same direction. So if you can see, I've got the hair in my hand here, right? So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to kind of carefully let me point the camera down a little bit more so you can see this. 
There we go. Let's get the thread out of the way. So I'm just going to kind of pick it up and move it around a little bit. Try to break up the big clumps of color that I'm seeing. And I'm just kind of rolling this around. This is a, by the way, this is way fussy. And you don't have to do this to catch fish. I mean, there's no reason to do this to, for the fish. It's just if you want to create this kind of cool looking speckled fly, this is the technique you do it with. So, you know, I'm just kind of, when I see a solid clump of one color or the other, I kind of pull it apart, break it up. Now I'm going to kind of try to stack it a little bit, put my scissors down here, and I'm going to try to, it's pretty ugly at the moment. Now, hopefully I'll bring some order to it, put it down here in my stacker. And you can see it's kind of mixed up a little bit there. So I'm going to pull it out. And again, try to bring some order to it. Let's trim out the tips or the butts here. Now I'm going to lay that bunch on the top, kind of come back to about the same distance. Come in here. I'm going to get three wraps. Again, I got to get behind the lead eyes. So I need to find my lead eyes there. Come in, come down through, come in. That's my third wrap. So again, I'm going to come in here. I'm going to hold this bunch up on top by holding the lead eyes, and I'm going to hold the hook shank to support it, and then I'm going to pull on that bunch like that. And I'm putting a fair amount of pressure on it. That's why I got this UTC, but I haven't gone to the point where I'm cutting hair. That's the important thing. Okay. Now, put some tension on it and get it up in front of the lead eyes. And get a couple wraps there as well. Okay, so now we'll do it again. Ouch. Yep, wouldn't be the first time. All right, so I'm going to come back and get my white hair here. I'm not bleeding, that's good. Um, come back in, get a nice big bunch here. Um, comb it out. Trim it. Say so, you now again, just like on that bunch of hair that I did. Oh, I do have a little. Oh yeah, I am bleeding a little bit. This happens to me a lot. I catch myself on the hook points. Okay, so I'm going to lay this in here. Wrap it three times. Come in, same deal before. Hold it on the bottom and come in and put some good pressure on it. Okay. All right. Now let's flip it over again. Okay, so yeah, we're pretty we're pretty good shape there. All right, so now let's come back and we'll do the same thing again on the front. So really, if you think about this hair, there's really just four clumps. There's there's two white clumps on the bottom and two mixed clumps on the top. So I'll come in here and comb this out. Lay that in there. I'm going to come and grab my chartreuse hair. Comb it out. So lay my chartreuse hair here. And I do line this up. The tips are going the same way as in the butts. The tips are over on this side of my hand, and the butts are on this side. So I'm just going to shuffle that around again. And I'm not going to need the tips on this, but I, I'm leaving them on for the moment. So again, I'm just kind of looking for those where I see a lot of color, trying to break that up, kind of keep it stacked a little bit and do this mixed technique.
and then we gather it together and it will stack it. That'll bring a little order to it. So come in here. Now I'm staying in front of the lead eyes here. So let me get my hook in there a little better. I'm going to work my thread through the hair, work it down through the hair, work it up through, down, go a third wrap, down. Now support it and just put it right in place on top, put some good pressure on it. Now, you really can't stack this. I mean, I could, I could come in here, I could come in here with my stacker and push on it a little bit. I did get a little bit on it. It opened up the you know, the hook eye a little bit, but you're not going to get a big stack like you will on a deer hair bass bug. So I'm going to throw a couple of half hitches in there. And then just like bass bugs, I'm going to take this. And you want to apply your zap to your thread. Don't try, if you try to stick it in there on the hair, you could really make a mess out of the hair or it's a little neater if you you put it on the thread and then come in and and some of these i tied they're tight enough that i don't have room if i have room i'll come in and i'll just like i do on a bass bug i will finish out i'll put a thread head over top of the gel spun and i will be able to do that on this one because i got enough room for that Okay, so there we are. You can kind of kind of see, you know, the hair all the way around it. So I'm going to start on the bottom here. And I guess I'll pull out a fresh razor blade. I'm not no way, here's my blade. Okay. Let's see how, how, how good this blade is. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to come down here to my my eye of my hook, and I and I want to be I want the blade to be parallel. In other words, I want to put a, a flat cut on the bottom, and I'm just going to kind of saw through there. Now I don't want to go right up to the the lead eyes. And you'll see why in a little bit. I want to keep a little bit of hair from the lead eyes. And I'll flip it over. And this is a pretty simple trim compared to doing a bass box. So same thing here. I want to keep this flat. And I'm just going to kind of cut back in here. And what I'm looking at is I'm looking at the, the butts of the hair that I'm seeing. So I'm just kind of trimming. You can tell. You can tell the butts of the hair because they're the flat, you know, they're flat. And then underneath that are the tips. So as I trim it, I'm just using the corner of my blade and I'm just taking out the butts that are sitting out at the front. I don't want to go too deep and get into the tips, you know, because that's going to be my collar. So I'm just kind of flattening this out here. And then... Mm -hmm. um, Do you so sell vacuum cleaners on the side? <laughs> uh, you know, yeah, you probably, I should probably have some big vacuum that's just kind of constantly sucking stuff. No, I make really huge messes. You can tell when I go to fly fishing shows, there can be 30 tires there and everybody can leave and you can walk around the venue and you know where I've been. <laughs> you know, it's just inevitable. It's just no way around it. Okay, so anyway, let's trim this a little bit on the edges. I'm still not getting too deep in there. My eyes are in there, but I don't want to get too crazy yet because I'm going to show you. Now, you can do a couple of things with these. If you want, you can just trim out. Okay, so now I see my lead eye here. Where's my, let me find it here on this side. There it is. I'm going to trim into it. A little bit on this side 
Here we go. And then I see it over here, so I'm going to trim into it. So I sh it shows, but I want to keep a little bit of a well there. If you want. Now, if you had did, uh, if you put a set of painted lead eyes on here, that you could just let them be your eyes. You know, you don't have to. So now you can see, kind of, can you see my lead eye is starting to show up there? And again, this is not, I could steam this and play with it, it but it doesn't need to be, you know, I'm not working to make some super fancy, um, you know, like bass bugs, I like to get them really nice and smooth and spend some time trimming them and make them, you know, really nice. But this one, you know, I guess I could, you know, what I'm doing right now is just trimming out around the eye of the hook so I can come in and I'll add a thread head on this here. Okay, let me come back to my razor blade now. This pattern would be a, you could tie this pattern for trout too. If any of you guys float rivers, any or any of you float rivers that um, you know, like the Colorado right here, going by my my house here, my home, um, or down in the lower brief parts of the Osable in Michigan, I have friends I know who float down there. Um, you know, this would be a this would be a good pattern to you know to take to take and you could strip it for trout too. I'm thinking okay. of awesome fly for largemouth and small smallmouth bass. Oh, it is. It is. And and like I said, if you fish it, you know, you fish it on an intermediate line. Okay. That's getting there. You know, I mean, like I could make it look really smooth and nice, but you know, why? You know, let me see. Let me see if I can get the camera to focus on this a little better. You, can you see the, no, you're not really getting the colors there, are you? No, it's got a little bit of a mix. It maybe didn't mix quite as nice as I wanted it to, but it's, you know, it's not a spot. It's obviously not a spot. It's got, uh, you know, it's got some, uh, you know, it's got some coloration that kind of goes through it and stuff, you know. But again, like I said, you don't have to do the mix. I mean, you could just do this with, you know, plain natural colored deer hair really top and bottom and just create a head that's going to move some water and you'd be fine. Okay. So now, now I'm going to show you my, my last little piece to this. And this is kind of my little departure. I guess I don't want to say mine. You know, if someone else has done this, I'm absolutely certain of that. But what I'm going to do is I kind of want to, you know, the lead eyes are fine. They're kind of buried in there. If I'd painted eyes, I could just stop there. No problem. But the other thing I can do with this is okay, I got to find my stuff here. Okay. So I'm going to use, let me find my eyeballs. Where are you? I know I brought them here somewhere. Up oh, there they are. They're right there where I put them. Okay. So I'm going to squeeze a little bit of this gelled zappa gap it's a it's a gorilla glue it's a super glue it's not zap it's a super glue but it's a real thick gel this bottle's getting pretty empty come on oh man are you gonna make me open another bottle <sighs> i was using this this afternoon and it was working fine all right, let me get down in this drawer and grab another another one of these. It's a little different looking bottle, but it's still, it's just Gorilla Glue gel. That's all it is. While you're doing that, Tim, i got a question I want to ask you to think about for a minute. If okay. you were going to teach somebody how to deer, how to, how to spin slash 
uh, stack deer hair, what's the first fly you would start with? I wouldn't start with a fly. I would start with a hook and a patch of hair and I would just spin and practice stacking and spinning, practicing hair, uh, the hair work. Um, and then, and then, um, you know, the thing is, I just work at, you know, rotating the hair to the bottom and putting the stacks and whatever. You fill it up, take a razor bait, cut it off. And if you work through a patch of hair that's, you know, about, you know, four by six or even maybe a three by four sort of patch of hair, if you work through and you stack that whole bunch and just cut it off, then I would go and I would tie flies. And I say that because when I started stacking hair, um, when I started working with deer hair, I was trying to tie complete flies and they were so embarrassingly ugly that I would throw them. I had a little quart jar sitting next to my desk. By the time the court jar was half full of these unbelievably ugly flies, um, I went, well, why am I wasting all this tailing material on flies that I don't like? So I stopped and I just started spinning hair, cutting it off, spinning hair, cutting it off, till I got to the point where I felt pretty good about the spinning hair part. Then I would go and I would do a hair bug. And the hair bug I would start with is, you guys know what a taps bug is? You ever heard of a taps bug? No, I haven't. Okay. No, I can view. Real simple. Uh, William Tapley, you know, his father used to be a writer for, I don't know, one of the Eastern, like not a fishing magazine. Um, but anyway, he used to write columns for uh, fly fishermen. But a taps bug, if you Google it, you'll find it. It's called a taps bug. All it is, it's way simple. All it is, is you just a bucktail, some bucktail for the tail. You know, you get your stinger hook, your bass hook, tie some bucktail in, that's your tail. Then you spin a deer hair head and you trim it and you got a popper. That's all it is. There's no legs, there's no eyes, a true tap bug, you know, and, and he maintains and he's right that it's all you need. You know, I mean, I would be kind of bored if that's all I tied, but um because i like doing the legs and the eyeballs and all that stuff but um but a taps bug would be a real simple one to start with you know i've heard of the taps bug um i was trying to find the book uh but i saw it in, in a book and it's basically like you said it's a little bit of um yeah. bucktail at the for the tail yeah but then the head is just one color it's all same color yeah, uh, of just a little bit fun I'm looking through my bookshelf. I know I've got it. But... Oh, where is it? Maybe I have it back in the sheet. I'm not seeing, but William G. Tapley. Um, I think it's the title of the book is Bass Bug Fishing. Um, and uh, and it's got the taps bug in. It's a good book. It's a good book. He's a good writer. Okay, so I put that glue in there and I've got that eye sitting there and that glue is probably hard up a little bit. Now what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take, let's see, that's my flex. Um, I'm gonna take this. Yeah, I'm gonna take a little bit of, whoops, where's my top for that? Here, let me look, maybe I can do the saloons. Sorry, I've got too many bottles back here. There we go. This is just a flow loop, just a sort of a thin UV. So just put a little bit of UV on the top of that. You want the UV to flow out to the deer hair a little bit. Okay. And that's what's going to help lock that fly in there. So if you do a thin, it'll kind of flow. Now I'm going to show you a light. Okay. I have a little flashlight. If I if I go travel, I do that. But my dentist, who I've been my, my dentist for like 30 years, and we he he's a fly fisherman, and he we were talking, and he, he said to me one day when I was in there for an appointment, he said, Do you do you do UV stuff? And I said, Yeah. He said, Hey, I got this great light for you. 
Okay, so it's an old UV light that he used to use for um, like crowns and stuff to cure UV dental cements. So, you know, like shield your eyes because this thing is crazy bright. Um, now, nah, I'm joking. I don't think, you know, but I know I don't look at it when I do use it. And boy, I'll tell you what, it cures the heck out of these eyes. Yeah. So now that eye is in there pretty solid. Now I'll come around on this side and we'll finish out, do the same thing. I think the key that a lot of people don't understand about UV resin is the light has to get to that resin in order to harden it. So if you yeah. don't poke in, it doesn't really matter on the inside part of that. Where no, it's no, that's why I don't have to get to that, it to yeah. harden it. Like I wouldn't use UV resin underneath here because it wouldn't work because you're right. The UV light doesn't get to it. So it doesn't harden the, and, and super glue what's super glues um, will harden. Get a little bit of that gel in there. There we go. Super glues harden when you, when you cut the oxygen off from them. And so, um, so when you put the eyeball on, you know, I'm going to let it sit for a second here once I get it on. Um, put my stick and just kind of push it on there, just put it in contact. But the UV, the UV on this eyeball will actually help to cure the, the, the um, super glue because when it coats it, then hardens, it's, it's uh, depriving that. The yeah, I'll see the, the stuff that, it's why it's why if you put glue on your finger, if, and if you guys use super glue, you know you put it on your finger and it's kind of it flows until you do that, and then bang, it sticks, you know. And so it's when you deprive it of oxygen that it that it or you 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 know that's when it that when it cures quickly. And so when you do this UV on top of it, that's kind of what you're doing. And all I'm doing is I'm just letting the UV kind of go into the hair out around the outside just a little bit. All it's going to do is it's going to help to add that eyeball, make that eyeball a little bit tougher. Um, flashlight will do the same thing this thing does. You know, this thing's kind of big and awkward. And now what I think I'm going to do to finish this fly... Another thing is uh, you can set your flies out in the sun. Yes. That UV uh, light that'll um, cure the stuff. So if, if they don't, if there's a little bit of like slime or, you know, kind yeah, of greasy it has, to yes. it or whatever, put them out in the sun a little bit. Yep. I, I've done that when I've gone fishing. When I've had, I've pulled some stuff out that has UV on it. And I'll take a couple of flies out, just put them in a thing on my boat and let them sit out in the sun because you're right, they harden up a little bit. I'm just going to come in with a little olive color thread since I've got some olive in my fly. I could do chartreuse or whatever, but I kind of, I like finishing the flies with a thread head. Um, I just think it makes them, it, it just finishes them off a little nicer and um Oops, there we go. And then I'll just, you know, simple, you know, just Sally Hansen's hard as nails is all it is. I just coat those thread wraps really good with this. And, um, and then the last thing I'll do on this one is, let me find a feather here. I know I've got a bunch of floating around. Take the glue out of the eye. So. so, you know, there you have it. Um, you know, I fish these. You can, you know, when I fish these, um, I fish them. Uh, Rio uh, makes a uh, little kind of figure eight type clips. They also make um, the little clips that are like a hook that comes through with an eye on it. 
uh, scientific anglers makes little bigger class type clips. And so I always fish any of my streamer patterns. I fish, I clip them. And then if I'm fishing pike, musky, of course, I've got bite tippet. Uh, my bite tippets, uh, the pike in my lake that I'm on in the summer where I got at my place, you know, mid 30s, a 40 inch pike would be a real, a real trophy. So, you know, I rarely 20, 30 pound wire. I don't go to 40 very often, but I put a clip on the end of it. It just gives the fly more movement in the water and the fish don't care and it doesn't affect casting at all. With, with musky, I may go up to like 60 pound saltwater fluorocarbon. Um, you know, leaders there, you know, they're a little, I don't know, a little more of a stealth leader, I guess, but they'll, a lot, I know guys that do just wire as well. And then, of course, for bass, you know, I'll, I'll, um, I'll fish, you know, uh, 16 pound tests, tippets, but I'll do a clip, you know, so the fly's got a lot of movement. Um, you know, it just, you know, just, it just, it's a hinge, you know, so it just moves in the water. Um, and so, yeah, this has been a, it's been a nice little pattern. It's kind of a neutral, the deer hair, the lead eyes and the deer hair kind of give it a more of a neutral buoyancy. So it kind of follows, you can kind of gauge your depth by using a, either add a tip to your bass line, like an intermediate tip or, um, or go to a full intermediate. I, I just, in fact, I just got a couple from SA, a full intermediate and a couple of graded sinks um, that I'm going to play with this coming summer. Um, I haven't really gone to full lines before. I've just kind of used the tips. I mean, I have had them in the past. I haven't had them in recent years. Um, but I'm going to try the full lines. And I don't know if you guys have looked at if any of you got the tactics book or whatever, um, you know, the way I rig is on my backing, I do what's called a reverse blind splice, which is a knotless loop. And I make it big enough that I can pass the reel through and stuff. And then all the modern fly lines now have welded loops. Um, and they're great. I mean, they, in my mind, welded loops has been one of the more revolutionary things that have come along in fly fishing because I can swap out lines. I have a, a, a thing of a bunch of fly lines and I can just, you know, pretty quickly, you know, SA makes kind of a reel that you can just throw it in, you can reel the line off, take the loop off, throw a new line on, reel it on, and I can swap out lines, you know, 15 minutes probably, maybe not even that long sometimes. So it's a real quick, easy way to change out lines. So you don't need to have a bunch of spools that you invest a bunch of money in, um, you know, you can just trade out your lines and take advantage of the loop to loop connections. Um, and I've seen one last little comment on loops and then I'll just throw it open to you guys. Um, I, I saw I've, every now and then I've seen online, there'll be guys who go, Oh, well, I cut these loops off and do my own thing. And I talked to Eric Johnson. I, I'm, I'm the guys from SA are in my, hometown where I grew up back in Michigan there in Midland, Michigan. And so I know those guys. I know he and Brad and some of the other guys at SA pretty well. And I and I was talking to Eric once and I just asked him, I said, so tell me about welded loops. You know, you know, how strong are they and all that? And he said, well the welded loops exceed the tinsel strength of the line. And I don't have like I don't have, you know, the line, you know, the the tools and stuff to you know, I played with them in different places when I've had the opportunity, but, you know, you can get line pullers that measure, well, what's the breaking strength of stuff. Um, but he says, this is Eric, he works for SA, says the tinsel strength of a welded loop that they have on their lines exceed the strength of the line. Meaning if you put the welded loop and you start stretching it and pulling it, it's going to break the line behind the loop before the loop lets go. And I also know that there's nothing you're going to put on the end of the fly line, a nail knot or whatever, that's going to move as smoothly through the guides as welded loops will. And so, you know, I think welded loops, like I said, I think it's one of the, you know, one of the bigger revolutions that's come along in fly fishing that I think has really changed a lot of things that I'm able to do by using 
you know, different tips and swapping out fly lines and kind of customizing my fly lines to what I want to do. So anyway, there you have it. <laughs>